Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, in our Gospel reading today, we read about four more men that have an encounter with Jesus. Now, if you remember from last week's sermon, we looked at the call of Philip and Nathaniel. Jesus had called Philip, and then Philip had told Nathaniel about the encounter that he had had with Jesus, who had called them with the words, follow me. And then Philip invites Nathaniel to come, come and see. Nathaniel came, and he saw Jesus, and he had an encounter with him, and he believed that Jesus was the Messiah. In today's Gospel reading, we have another encounter with Jesus, this time from Mark's Gospel. Jesus is just beginning his public ministry. He comes into Galilee, and he passes by the Sea of Galilee. And there, he, he called these fishermen to become fishers of men. Now, notice the technique that Jesus uses. See, unlike today, where if you're an employer and you're looking for a quote-unquote qualified applicant, and, and so maybe you post the job on Facebook, Jesus didn't do that. He didn't set up a LinkedIn profile. He didn't run an ad. He didn't interview multiple contenders for the same job. But not only that, once Jesus found them, he didn't ask them if they, they wanted to come along. We see the text says, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me. Follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Friends, can you sense, can you feel the urgency, the immediacy, the conviction of these men? Follow me. And so they did, immediately. That word immediately is big theology. See, they could have scratched their heads and thought about it and discussed the pros and cons with each other. They could have gone home and talked to their wives, their families, their neighbors. Like today, where maybe we're blessed enough to have multiple job offers, and so we compare the two jobs one against the other. Who has the better benefit package? Who pays better? Who gives me more paid time off? You know, they could have said to Jesus, you know, Jesus... We need some time to, to think about this. We're going to need to go home and check with our wives to see if they're on board with this, or, or maybe check with our boss. Maybe we need to go and see what other offers there might be out there for us. But when Jesus called these men, there was none of that. In fact, they didn't question his call at all. They didn't think about it. They didn't consult their families. They didn't wait to see if something better would come along. They didn't hesitate. They just followed him. You know, last week I explained that Jesus is here. He's here in his word as we read from scripture. He's here in his sacrament, here in the waters of baptism, in the bread and the wine of the Eucharist. And through Jesus' presence, he calls us, just like we read last week, he calls Samuel. And this week, like we read, how, or last week we read about Philip and Nathaniel. And this week, the other disciples. See, for us as Christians, his call is not a request. He wants us to follow him. And he wants us to do it now. You see, when Jesus calls us, there is a sense of urgency. There is this sense that Jesus is literally breaking into our world. He's literally breaking into our lives with such a strong force that we have little choice but to decide right now, not tomorrow or the day after that, but now. Now, while he encounters us. Now, while his presence is still with us. What's the urgency? What's the hurry? 
Well, friends, there are people who are literally dying in our world every day who have never heard the saving name of Jesus Christ. But we have. We've heard his name. And so he wants us to share that same saving name with others while they can still encounter Jesus. That's the hurry. That's why when Jesus calls us, when he encounters us, he does so with a sense of urgency. He does so with a sense of immediacy, with a sense of conviction. He wants us to hear that call with a sense of commitment. A sense that tells us that we are to turn our entire lives over to him. And we'd go. Maybe we go like I am to Ghana. Maybe you go downtown to loaves and fishes and feed the hungry here in Sacramento. The point of what we hear is that when we hear the call, we answer by going. You know, that's why I can't understand why we have yet to fill our outreach director position. That is an immediate reflection of the great commission that is given to each one of us in those waters of baptism. And each time we come to the Lord's table, he calls us to go. That being said, we hear Jesus' words, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now these guys, having been fishermen, they knew what he was talking about, that they would become fishers of of men, of people, that they would go out and catch others for Jesus, but not with a fishing net. See, they would catch others with that same sweet gospel message of repentance and forgiveness that Jesus was proclaiming. They would share with others the good news that Jesus was now sharing with them in their midst. See, not only as Christians, not only does Jesus call us to a life of urgency and conviction, but he calls us to a task. He calls each believer to a real task. In fact, it's a life-saving task. He calls us to a job. He calls us to do something with what he has given to us, with our faith. See, he calls us to share. He calls us to give to others what he has first given to us, his love, his caring, his forgiveness. Jesus calls us to love those in this world that nobody else will love. Jesus calls us to reach out to the lonely, to the hungry, to the sick, to the ones in prison to the disabled, to the forsaken, the needy, all those people that need to hear that somebody indeed does love them, and that someone is Jesus Christ. Why do we have a vacancy as outreach director? Hear Jesus' words, follow me. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God, that the kingdom of God was now near. It was at hand. And so now he calls us to go into all the world with that same message, that message of good news of God, that his kingdom is here. Why the urgency? Why now? Because later might be too late. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray. Jesus, you know us. You know us with all our infirmities, all our imperfections, all our sin. <laughs> and you still love us. You love us so much that you died on the cross for us. You love us so much that you give us these waters of baptism for each one of us. This morning for Cameron and Brandon, as you made them yours. The same is true for each one of us who has been baptized. We are yours forever. You share with us your very body and blood at your table, Lord. So we celebrate with the entire congregation that you have now invited Matthew to your table. Father, we pray for our own congregation. Lord, lead us and guide us to do your work. Help us to fill the outreach director position.
so that we can take the same gospel of good news to all who need to hear that they are loved. They're loved by you now and forever. Amen. Now may the true faith which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.